The table is set for Kitchenvention's biggest event of the year, the feast. For this episode, we asked you to send in your favorite recipes, and the response was overwhelming. We got 18 submissions, which got a total of 540 likes all together on our Facebook page. And tonight, we'll be making the top four dishes, and the people who submitted them will be here with their guests to taste them. It's going to be our best, tastiest episode of the year, so stick around. Tonight we're going to be having cinnamon roll coals first, followed by slutty brownies, and then chocolate peanut butter cupcakes, and finally a strawberry tort to finish it out. It's going to be a great meal. So first up, Sasha's going to be serving us the cinnamon roll coals. Alright, so we're going to start off with these cinnamon roll coals, and now these were pretty popular too. I got second place with 100 likes, so I'm going to do my best to not disappoint our feast contestants. So what I'm going to start off is I'm going to get two sticks of butter and half a cup of powdered sugar and soften it using an electric beater in this bowl right here. I'm just going to unwrap these. Get that in there. And this is the, this is going to become the cinnamon sugar sort of mix that I'm going to add in between the bread. So that was two sticks of butter here and I'm going to add half a cup of powdered sugar. Okay, and then I'm just going to get an electric mixer and just sort of mix it until it's softened a bit. So. Alright, so now we got our butter softened, I'm just going to scrape off a little bit with the rubber spatula. Make sure we get it all in there. Nice. Yeah, that'll that'll be very easy to spread on the bread. So, I mean, if you get a little bit left over on your um, on the beater, it's not gonna be the end of the world because there's so much of it already that it's not too bad. Once you scrape most of it off, I'm not gonna worry about getting like every little bit. So, I'm gonna put this down. And now what I'm gonna do is add in a half a cup of honey. Add that right in, and I'm going to just mix it, or stir it with uh, the spatula. No need to get out the beaters again. So get that all in there. I'm also going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. And for that, we've just been using a... This cap is like about half a teaspoon, so I'm just going to put in four of these. And that's a pretty good approximation. With vanilla, you know, it's, it's a very personal thing. It's not going to, like, ruin the dish if you add a little bit more or a little bit less. So it's really your own personal taste. Add in the vanilla, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it a good stir with the spatula, make sure everything's mixed together. The butter is a little bit firm now, so you want to use a little bit of force to make sure it mixes well. Okay, now that this is nice and mixed, I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 350. Alright, so we'll let that heat up, and while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the bread. So the way you want to do this is you want to get the things into squares. So how I'm going to do that is just cut the bread in one direction, about half an inch apart, the cuts, and then I'm just going to rotate it and cut in the other direction, and that'll give us perfect squares to work with, and then we'll just be able to pull those right out. So I'm going to start with that, and you're going to want to cut pretty much down to the base. Don't go all the way through, obviously, but for the most part, just get a sharp knife and cut through more or less to the bottom. So this is my first cut. I'm going to go at about half an inch. I don't know exactly what half an inch is, but I think it's a pretty good approximation. Just think in terms of how big you want the pieces to be in the end. So that's good. And just, so I'm going to 
going to do is just flip over the bread and go uh, perpendicular to that, and that will make our squares. So let's start around here, make the first cut, and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble if you have a sharp knife here. So, there we go. Now, we have our squares ready. So what I'm going to do now, I have this nice and mixed. I'm just going to get a knife, just a, a plain butter knife, and I'm just going to grab a little bit and just start spreading it in between all the cracks. So you really want to work it in there. Don't be afraid to kind of use your hands to spread it out and make sure you get a good amount in. Okay, so I've gotten the butter between all the cracks. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of grab the bread and um, sort of just pull it out because that'll help to space it out so it'll be easier to pull and it'll also make it easier to pour in the cinnamon sugar. So just kind of, if anything seems stuck together, you can kind of just separate it out. But yeah, you can see that's kind of starting to take more of a pull shape. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one just really quickly. Some of them might be a little bit stuck together because of the butter, but it's not too big of a deal. It should separate very easily. So there we have that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is combine the cinnamon and the sugar. So what we have here is a cup of sugar. The recipe actually called for two cups for two pieces of bread, but we I think it's a little bit too much, so if we need more, I'll add it, but I think this should be fine for now. And this is two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. So I'm going to put that together and just kind of mix it really. You can just work with your hands a little bit, get the cinnamon in to spread through the sugar. All right. Ooh, I love the smell of cinnamon. And I think it's all gonna go really well together. Okay, so I've gotten that. And what I'm gonna do now is start sort of just pulling apart the bread and sprinkling the cinnamon sugar in between the pieces. Sort of the same thing I did with the butter, except this with the cinnamon sugar instead. Just make sure it gets in between every crack. Yeah, I don't have to be as precise here because uh, I'll, I'll also want to get some of the cinnamon onto the in onto the surface of the bread. So as long as it gets in between, it doesn't matter if some of it lands on top. Okay, so I've got these both covered in sugar. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is wrap up each of these in the foil, and that'll help it bake evenly. There's one, and there's the other. If your foil doesn't go all the way across, it's not too big of a deal. The whole point of it is just to kind of contain the heat. So we got that, and I'm going to go ahead and slide these into the oven. All right. All right. So that's looking good. So I'm going to let this bake for a little bit and I'm going to come back when it's almost done and we're going to make our icing. Okay, so our bread has been in the oven for about 20 minutes now. It's almost done. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the icing while we wait for it to finish up. So what I have here is a cup of powdered sugar and four tablespoons of milk. And it's really simple. I'm just going to pour this into here. And just mix it. No big deal. Alright, so now that this is thoroughly mixed, I'm just going to go ahead and split it up among these two bowls for serving. Oh, that's nice and, nice and icing-like. Perfect. So, it's a little bit thick, but 
if you if you wait, it'll pour out. Okay. All right, so there's one. He's gonna go ahead and get the rest of this into the other bowl. So I've got all my cinnamon out, or, sorry, I've got my icing set up, so now we're going to go ahead and pull the bread from the oven. I'm going to go ahead and get my oven mitt on so I don't burn myself. You want to be careful because the foil is very hot when it comes out of the oven. That's really smart. Yeah. That's clever. <laughs> you guys were very polite on this side here. This side just ambles. <laughs> right. and we're trying. <laughs> we're trying. We don't want to figure it out. Yeah. No, you nice. guys, I think you did it right. Yeah, yeah that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so Yeah, the ones in the middle are the best. Those got a lot of money. Right, so as we finish this one up, the next dish up is Slutty Brownies. So I hope you guys are ready for their most popular dish on Facebook. So today I'm going to be making uh, Slutty Brownies for you. Now, uh, the Slutty Brownies were a really popular dish in our contest. We got 131 likes for them. So people really want to see this dish, which means we got to make it perfect. Alright, now what the Slutty Brownies actually are is actually a layer of chocolate chip cookie, kind of like in a brookie, with another layer of Oreo, and then finally a layer of brownie on top. So, kind of unhealthy, but it should be incredibly delicious. Now we're going to begin by making the uh, cookie base, and um, we're going to go ahead and set our oven to preheat at 350 degrees. All right, so that by the time we're done making the uh, brownie, we'll be able to uh, go ahead and put it in the oven. So we're going to start by adding a uh, stick of butter into a dish or a bowl. And it's been softened, so we've had it sitting out for a little bit. And now we're going to uh, beat it so that uh, we can add other ingredients. All right, so we're just going to uh, beat the butter. Alright, 
that's pretty good. And uh, next we're going to be adding a, a quarter cup of white sugar, a quarter cup of brown sugar, a, a half teaspoon of salt, and an, as well as a half teaspoon of baking soda and a half teaspoon of baking powder. So we're going to add that in. And we're going to start beating that together as well. Okay, and now we're going to add uh, one egg. And we're also going to add a, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Alright, that's about right. With vanilla you don't have to be super exact. And then uh, we're going to continue to beat this together until we get it all nice and smooth. Alright, that's pretty good and we should be done for the, with the mixer for now. So we're going to put that over off to the side. <clears throat> And now we're going to be adding a, a cup and a half of flour. And now I'm going to switch over to a regular spoon because it's a little bit weird to mix, uh, mix flour into this with an electric mixer. So I'm just going to mix this all in. Now this is your uh, pretty standard cookie dough recipe. Uh, nothing too fancy here, but it, you know, it works. They're excellent. Okay, and since I'll be working with this with my hands, uh, I did wash my hands before we started, and that's very important, especially when you're serving this to people. All right, and finally, we're gonna add one cup of chocolate chips because these are chocolate chip cookies at the bottom. And mix that in. Okay, so now we're going to come over to our pan where we'll be putting everything in, and we're going to spray it lightly with some canola oil so it doesn't stick. Okay. So we have our cookie dough here. It's a little bit more crumbly than you would expect from a regular cookie dough, but uh, that's because it's going to be baked underneath some other things. So we're just going to add that in there so that we can create that uh, bottom layer of cookie. All right, so that is the uh, first layer of our slutty brownies. Great name for a dish. All right, so next we're gonna be making our uh, brownie uh, brownie batter, and we're gonna start with uh, turning a uh, pan on to about medium heat to melt our butter down. And uh, normally while we would microwave uh, butter to melt it, we're gonna be mixing everything in this pan, so it's just easier to work it this way. to uh, keep moving that around because if you you need to keep butter moving constantly while it's being cooked otherwise it can burn really easily and that does not taste very good all right so while that's going I think I'm gonna go ahead and start lining our Oreos 
because this is our next layer, we have 16 double stuff Oreos because you want that uh, extra goodness that comes from all that cream on the inside. So we're just going to start layering those along our uh, cookie. All at the same time we'll be keep mixing our butter because you want to keep a close eye on that. All right, so it looks like we're gonna need some more Oreos, but we have a few more in our cabinet over here. So we'll line the rest. You don't need to make the Oreo lining as tight as I did. Uh, you know, I just wanna get all the uh, Oreo goodness in, because it is America's favorite cookie. And now I sound like product placement. <laughs> All right, so we'll set that aside, and our, buttles, our butter is almost done melting. All right, so it's done melting, and we're going to turn off the heat. We no longer need that. So here I have a uh, cup and a half of sugar plus a uh, tea half teaspoon of salt, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Now uh, I'm going to mix that together. I actually made a mistake. This is a uh, one cup of sugar that I used, but it's still a half teaspoon of salt. And we'll take that off. And now I'm going to add a three quarter cup of cocoa. Because brownies got to be chocolate flavored. Mix that in. Ooh, and now it's real dark like brownie batter should be. We just got a few more ingredients to add in. And it's already looking really delicious. So this is a little bit thick. And uh, that's fine because we're going to be adding two eggs now. All right, and finally we have just half a cup of flour to, because uh, you know it is supposed to be kind of a cake consistency. Oh, and I almost forgot we add two teaspoons of vanilla. We're gonna go ahead and add that before I mix in all the flour. Now, I guesstimate this vanilla because I find this cap is about half a teaspoon, so I added four to get the full two teaspoons. We're gonna mix this all together and it's getting nice and thick like brownie batter usually is. Oh, and you can just smell the chocolate coming off of it. It's wonderful. I love chocolate, so I'm very excited for these brownies. Uh, I think our guests should really like them because they're gonna be amazing. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna get all the extra batter off of our whisk. And we're gonna come over back to our pan and we're gonna add the final layer, which is the actual brownie. So we're gonna start to pour that over. And it's really thick. We're gonna try and get as much of this batter as we possibly can out. We're doing pretty good. 
Uh, there's not much batter left in here. All right, and now we're just going to try and spread this out as much as we can over the uh, over the Oreos and the cookie. All right, so that looks to be about as good as I can get it. And uh, I'm going to put this in the oven for a. Uh, about half an hour, and uh, we'll keep checking on it, because these are very powerful ovens, as uh, I'm sure you realized by now. Alright, so we're going to set our timer for 30 minutes, and uh, soon our guests will be able to eat slutty brownies. Alright, so uh, our slutty brownies should be done cooking. I'm going to take them out. Alright, and it's looking really delicious. Uh, we're going to let them uh, sit for, a, for a, just a moment uh, so that we can let it cool off a bit. Otherwise, it'll be really, uh, really uh, soft and it won't be able to cut very easily. Alright, so our uh, brownies have chilled a little bit and um, <clears throat> we're going to cut these into about 18 portions because we don't want to serve too large a brownie since we have lots of desserts to serve our guests tonight. All right, I'm going to begin cutting into these. We're just going to put a few of these on each plate. Alright, ooh, that just looks delicious. I am very jealous of our guests right now. And the, uh, having the aluminum foil in there really made this a lot easier to uh, take them out of the pan. So that's very helpful. Alright, and so we've got nice portions of brownies to serve to our guests, and they just look absolutely delicious. Alright, and now we're going to uh, take these brownies out to our guests. Alright, so we have slutty brownies here. Uh, they should be delicious. Uh, the bottom layer is a standard chocolate chip cookie dough. And above that is a layer of double stuffed Oreos. And finally, we have a layer of really chocolatey brownies. It should be delicious, and I really hope you like it. Thank you. Go ahead and dig in. Double stuffed Oreos. Yeah, guys, we're really excited about this dish. Let's enjoy it. Well, every time we get asked, it's funny. Yeah. Let's dig in. Yeah, it's like a brookie, but it's got a little extra in there. Oh my god. You guys like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I feel like in the brookie, the cookie gets lost a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's almost it's like, like a brownie. brownie. Yeah. Like yeah. Mm. Okay, so which one of you guys submitted this dish? I did. Yeah. And uh, where did it come from? How did you hear it? Um, I was actually watching Jay Leno, and then, oh, right. <laughs> and then Jessica Simpson was talking about it. So, That's <laughs> yeah, I so do, a do you know why there's so slutty brownies? We've been wondering this the whole time. Um, because a lot of stuff goes into it. Uh huh. So. Oh. <laughs> 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 we were trying to figure out that out for the longest time, so oh, yeah. I'm glad we understand that. So your dish actually had 132 likes by the end of our contest. How did you manage that? Um, I basically just sent a message to everyone just asking them to like it. So you, you message people directly? Mm -hmm. uh, that's yes. a really cool idea. I know we had a lot of Facebook statuses out there for them, but I think oh, that works. Oh yeah, Facebook. That too. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, I actually got some of my friends to have a little more influence. So then they posted it to the Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's the best way to do it, to <laughs> share it, then you get your friends to share it, and it just spreads. All right, so let's finish these up. And then up next, we're going to have Kathleen and Juliana preparing our chocolate peanut butter cupcakes for you guys. Yum. Are you ready? Okay, today we're making chocolate peanut butter cupcakes for our feast, and this recipe got 82 likes on Facebook, so it did really well, and we're really excited to make it. Mm-hmm. So first, we're going to preheat the oven to 325. So I'm going to go ahead and do that if you want to get started, Juliana. And then we're going to start with a stick and a half of butter, and we're going to cream this with an electric mixer until it's nice and smooth, and then add some sugar to that. And um, this is actually my favorite part of cooking because I like to <laughs> make the sugar stick. Struggle a little bit, but Just that's okay. okay. perfect consistency and then we're going to add our uh, cup and a fourth of sugar mm -hmm. and just mix that in really well sugar mixture, we're going to add two eggs, and mix that in nicely. Okay, and for the final addition to this mixture, we're going to add just a capful of vanilla extract, which is about half a teaspoon. Okay. I think you want three of those. Three of these? Yeah, extra strong flavor. Okay. So it'll be about 1.5 teaspoons of vanilla. Alright, cool. And while Juliana's finishing up with that, I'm going to start with my part of the mixture. I'm going to add first a half cup of cocoa powder, right here. Alright, so we did that. Now we're adding a quarter cup of coffee, actually, to give it a little bit of extra flavor. It also adds some moisture and makes the, the, the chocolate really stand out, which is good. Alright, and finally for my part, we're going to add some milk. We have about a half cup of milk, uh, so we're just going to pour that in there. Just nice and gently. And soon we'll combine it. All this stuff is going to go into the actual body of the cupcakes. Okay, so now we're going to add the flour mixture, which is about a cup and a half of flour, a uh, half a teaspoon of baking so soda, and um, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So we're just going to add that in with our butter mixture from before and mix that together. <laughs> scrape down what was left on the side of the bowl and just make sure that that gets mixed in really well too. Okay. Alright, looking good. It's a nice consistency. Uh, it's a little bit thick right now, but don't worry, we're adding most of the liquid uh, with this stuff, so it's all going to okay. turn out perfect. And then we're ready to combine the two mixtures. Alright, sounds good. Here, we'll go ahead and pour this in there. Nice and gently look at all that chocolate. Amazing. Here, do you want me to scrape it a little bit? Get all of that flavor in there. Yep, there you go. And just go ahead and exact. Okay. And then we're just gonna really mix that chocolate in. And then after that, we'll fill our cupcake tins. And we were really impressed with how many likes this one got. At 82 likes, that's crazy. So many people decided they wanted these chocolate peanut butter cupcakes. So hopefully our feast participants will like them as well. And you should definitely try it at home. I mean, if this many people liked it, it has to be good, right? Okay. 
And then we have a really solid consistency here, so we're just gonna fill our cupcake tins now. All right, let's okay. see. All right, so now we're ready to fill our cupcakes. The recipe calls for us to fill them a little bit more than half, which is more than you might normally do. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that, make them extra big cupcakes. So we're really excited about that. All right. Oops, it's a little thick, but don't worry about it. And this is thicker than some cupcake mixes, um, so you're gonna wanna spoon it in there as opposed to maybe like pouring it. That wouldn't work so well. Alright, good stuff. So we have our 18 cupcakes filled. Now we're going to put them in the oven. The recipe calls for 20 to 25 minutes. It might differ based on your oven, so just watch them. Um, but yeah, go ahead, just toss them on in there. Let's see, we'll put the other one in front. Alright, cool. And now we'll wait. Alright, so now it's about time to take our cupcakes out of the oven. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Mmm, they're smelling good. Oops, struggles. Yep, just like that. They've risen lovely. They smell amazing. And then while those are cooling, we're going to start our frosting. So that's going to be about a third a cup of butter, a third a cup of peanut butter, two-thirds cup of powdered sugar, and then we're going to add milk for consistency. So first we're going to start with our butter and peanut butter and just cream those together kind of like we did with the other mixture. is working, we will mix that on low. Actually, neither of these are in there. There we go. Oh, yeah. Better to do it now than after we turned it on. There we go. Okay. So that's nice and creamy. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to add our powdered sugar. And again, we want to add this until it's really well mixed. So, all of this needs to be dampened by the peanut butter and butter. Okay, and right now, this doesn't look very much like frosting at all, so we're going to add about a third a tablespoon of milk, just a little bit of this, maybe half a tablespoon, and if we need more, we can add that later. And then I'm just going to scrape down the sides of this with a spatula. Okay, good. I think we want a little bit more milk in there. Yeah. It's a lot better, so we're starting to get that frosting consistency that's nice and smooth, but the smoother it is, the easier it's going to be to frost these cupcakes. Okay, so we're just going to add our other half a teaspoon or a tablespoon right now, and then we'll mix that together. Okay. All right, looking good. We're almost there. Alright, cool. So how we're going to frost it is we have these plastic bags. Uh, we're going to put it in. We cut the corners off the bags, if you can see that. Um, and that way it'll get come out at a nice steady pace, but at the same time, um, it's easy to use. And you don't have to worry about like dealing with knives and trying to get the frosting off the knives. It works really well. So um, we have two of them, so we can both do it. Um, and we're just going to put the frosting in here and go ahead and frost the cupcakes. Alright, so. Oh, that was really good. Alright, good. It smells really good. It smells just like peanut butter. Just perfect. Because <laughs> we're making peanut butter chocolate cupcakes. And this will complement the chocolate flavoring in the cupcakes perfect. really well. And yep, yeah, just go ahead and do that. We'll squeeze it out of the corner of the bag and we're good to go. Um, here, Juliana, if you want to take one of them, and I'll do another one. Okay, and we're just going to do this in a kind of swoop, like this. 
And frost it in a little oh. oh, impressive. This is harder to do than it looks. <laughs> Look at that. That looks pro. Ta da! Yeah, impressive. All right. So we frosted all that we could. You might want to make a little bit more frosting than we did because some people like a lot of frosting. Um, but now we're going to go ahead. We have these chocolate chips right here. And we're going to sprinkle over the top to give it a little bit of extra chocolate in the frosting. Um, so Juliana, you want to take some, a couple? Okay. Just be careful. And we're just going to sprinkle those on top. Yeah. Just that just Maybe just work it into the frosting a little bit because the frosting is a little bit thicker. You're able to stick them in there and really like make them look good. And of course, we need more chocolate in our chocolate peanut butter cupcakes, so. So we're, now that we're frosted, we're going to go ahead and grab some plates. Okay. okay. Alright, awesome. We're going to put four on each, and we'll be ready to serve them to our guests. Just choose the four best. Looking good. Oh, look at this. Look at this. And now we have our display, and we're just going to go take these out to our feast participants. Alrighty, let's go. Oops. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Alright guys, for the third course of our feast, we have some chocolate peanut butter cupcakes. We're really excited about them. Julie and I made them um, just now for you guys. And these have just a hint of espresso in them, which really doesn't uh, take too much away from the flavor, but adds a little bit of bitterness, so after all those sweet slutty brownies, these will be really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a great combination between the peanut butter and the chocolate. So like all together it kinda of just gets in. Yeah, well frosting will be really rich. Cool. So who's here representing this dish? Yeah. You guys, all right. So your friend Emily made it. Yeah. yeah. So um, do you know where she got this dish from? Um, she's actually been on a cupcake spree recently, uh -huh. and so she's just been making up recipes, and this was one of the really good recipes that she made. So. Wow, yeah. She yeah. picked a good one to send in, for sure. Yeah, so tasty. And you guys tasted these before from her? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, when she was making them, I actually got to taste test them. Yeah, so how do these compare to the original? Um, these are actually really good. The frosting's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but I mean, okay. props to both you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Um, and do you know how she got all her likes on Facebook? Uh, she posted a few statuses encouraging likes from her friends. Mm -hmm. uh, she got a lot of her family friends to do it because um, whenever she makes them, she passes them out to all her friends. So, oh, so they before. people know about these people cupcakes already. Good. And um, a lot of people from our high school, I think, yeah. liked it as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know like most of you guys, I'm sure, were posting these like constantly every day. It's not enough to just post it one time. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep it in people's news feeds, <laughs> keep reminding them. So you guys did an excellent job of that. All right, so while you guys are finishing this up, I actually have a dish for you guys, or to prepare for you guys. So it's gonna be a strawberry tort, and I'm gonna to head to the kitchen right now and make it, so enjoy the rest of your brownies. All right, so I've taken a quick break from dining with our guests to show you how to make our last dish of the day. This is called a strawberry tort, and it was actually our fourth place dish, but it's still got 50 likes on Facebook, so that's pretty good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat our oven to 350. That way it'll be all ready to go when we want to use it. And this dish requires us to separate eight eggs and two whites and yolks. So that's going to take a lot of work. And we're going to be very careful with it. We don't want to get any yolk into our whites or they're not going to stiffen correctly. So as you can see here, I'm making two little cups out of the different shell halves. And we're just going to transfer the yolk back and forth between them and let the white drip into our bowl. So get as much of the white as you can into your bowl, and then you're going to put your yolk in another bowl right there. It's okay if a little white goes into that bowl, because having white in the egg or in the yolk bowl is not an issue. But if you get yolk into here, it's not going to form those nice peaks that we need.
So I'm gonna rinse my hands off, they're kinda eggy right now. And we're gonna attend to our egg yolk mixture first. Great, we'll throw this in here. We're gonna be adding our dry ingredients to this, so first I'm gonna add half a cup of white sugar, and then I'm gonna whisk this together. You can use an electric feeder for this portion, it's not that necessary, but when we go to work on the egg whites, we're definitely going to want one. It takes a lot of beating power to get them stiff. So our sugar is all mixed in. Now we've got half a cup of cake flour with two tablespoons of baking powder. And um, cake flour is a little bit different from all-purpose flour. I've actually read that you can make your own cake flour by just adding cornstarch to normal flour. So if you can't find it, because it is a little more difficult to find, that's an option. But we wanted to uh, bring out our best for the feast, so we went for the real stuff. So it's making a pretty nice batter consistency. And the final thing we're going to put in this part of the batter is half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So just about a capful. I'm going to whisk this together pretty quickly, and then we are going to beat our egg whites. This is looking really smooth, so I'm just going to set this aside. I've got my beaters plugged in, and just like you don't want any water in the bowl, you want to make sure your beaters are completely dry too. I'm going to turn them on high speed. for stiff peaks to form. And this is great. You can see little bits of it are standing up in stiff peaks, so that's exactly what we want. And now we're going to fold these two mixtures together to make our final batter. So I'm going to use the spatula for that. So I'm just going to add this in first. And as you can tell already, egg whites are a really delicate thing when they're beat. So we want to be really gentle when we're folding this. This is going to lead to a really nice and light and fluffy cake. Just as a little preview of what we'll be doing with this, we're actually going to roll this cake with a cream and strawberry filling in the middle, and uh, it's going to turn into something that we slice once it's kind of a little tube, and it'll make this really delicious uh, white cake, strawberry, and cream flavor combination. Alright, this looks pretty good. So I've got a pan that I've put parchment paper in and I've buttered it. And it's really important that we do that because we are going to take the uh, baked cake out of this pan before it even cools so that we can roll it properly. So you're going to really want to get it so that it uh, is able to come out. If our cake gets crumbly or falls apart, it's going to ruin the whole dish. That looks good. There's a little bit of uh, batter left in this bowl, but I don't think we need any more of it. I'm going to put it into our oven. Okay, so this is going to bake for about 20 minutes, but you're going to want to check on it constantly. Um, because like I said, it's really important that it doesn't overcook and fall apart, and it's really also important that it doesn't undercook and you can't roll it. So it's really supposed to take on this spongy, light texture, and that's what we're looking for. All right, so it's been just about 20 minutes, and we're ready to take our cake out. Before you do that, you're going to want to prepare a dish towel like I have right here. I've covered it with powdered sugar, and I'll explain why in just a second. And our cake's looking nice and golden brown. It's super spongy, and that's because of the eggs. They've made it really nice, light, and fluffy. So immediately before the cake cools, we're going to take it, we're going to flip it over onto our towel. And the reason we need to do this is because we need to roll this cake up as it's cooling so that it'll maintain its rolled shape after it cools. So this looks really nice. 
And we've just put the powdered sugar on the towel so um, the cake won't stick to it and it'll take on a little bit of the sweetness. So I'm just going to start here, put the towel on, and be very gentle with it. You don't want your cake to fall apart or crack right now. So take your time. And remember it's very hot. I'm kind of getting like a steam bath for my hands right now. I'm going to put that over there and we're going to let that cool. And as it's cooling, we're going to make our whipped topping. And this whipped cream is actually going to go on the inside of the tort and the outside, so we'll need a lot of it. Alright, so we're going to start with a pint of whipping cream. You can either use this or heavy cream, both will work. And just like we did with the egg whites, we're going to beat this until it's stiff. But we probably want this to be a little bit stiffer than the egg whites, actually, because those are still somewhat liquidy and viscous, and we want this to uh, stick to the top of the cake. So I'm going to beat this. And as we're doing this, we're going to add gradually a teaspoon of vanilla extract and two tablespoons of powdered sugar. So I'm just going to add half a teaspoon at first, and then we're going to a little more. Right, and we've got our sugar measured out already, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in. This isn't quite as delicate as the egg yolks, or the egg whites, actually, but we still need to be careful not to add things too quickly and not to get too much moisture in here. Still stiffening up. We're going to add our second half table, or half teaspoon, I'm sorry, of vanilla. going to add our final part of sugar and we're not putting that much powdered sugar in this so it's not really going to be an intensely sweet cream and uh, overall this dish doesn't have quite as much sugar as the other one so it's going to be a more subtle flavor. That looks good. It took quite a while, so don't dismay if this takes longer than the eggs do. It should. So I'm just going to stir this up with a spatula. As you can see, it's this nice fluffy texture that we're going to be able to spread really easily, and it's forming those peaks that we talked about. Alright, we're going to check on our cake now. I think it should be cool. And because we've had it rolled up this whole time, I'm going to get a plate out to put it on first. Because we've had it rolled up this whole time, it's going to have a tendency to roll a lot better when we do the final product. So that was the goal in all this. I'm going to unroll it carefully. And transfer it to this plate. Alright, so now we're going to add our whipped topping to this. We're going to try to use about half of it because the other half is going to go on the outside. We're just going to spread this all over the middle here. And uh, what you can do, what the original recipe recommends actually, is taking the cream, uh, splitting it in half, and then folding in the strawberries so you get this mixture that you can put on. We decided because we have kind of big strawberry slices, we just wanted to place them, and either will work fine. Uh, both ways will get you a really nice distribution of strawberries and cream throughout it. All right, I would say our center is sufficiently creamy now. We've sliced up about a quart of strawberries, a little less because we're going to use whole strawberries as a garnish on top. I'm just going to lay these all across it. This might be more than we need. And we've been joking, we consider this our healthy dish out of the four because it's got fruit, so that's more than the other dishes can say for them. Speaking of these dishes reminding us of old ones, this is also reminding me of the dessert pizza we made earlier this season where we cut the strawberries this way to act as pepperonis.
and I'm just going to fill in the gaps with some of these little slices. All right, that should be a very flavorful filling. So now I'm just gonna take this, and gently like before, although it probably won't be as delicate this time, we're gonna roll it. Strawberries might not maintain their original layout, but that's fine. And our exterior looks pretty good. If it cracks, though, it's not a problem. You're gonna cover it with whipped cream, so um, people won't really be able to see that. So I'm gonna take the rest of the whipped cream, and we're gonna leave this side exposed so you can see all the filling, but I'm going to cover the top as much of it as we can get on there. So, I'm going to make sure this little, uh, this is where it comes together. I'm going to make sure it's all sealed. This is the reason why you need to make sure you're beating your cream for a really long time. If you uh, stop it when it's still kind of liquidy, then it's just going to run right off the top of the cake. And in order to make this correctly, you got to have it stick. Alright, that looks really nice. I've kept eight strawberries for our eight guests hole, and we're going to put these on top as a garnish. So, it is a circular cake, so you have to be careful that they don't roll off. But the cream should help with that. I hope all eight of them will fit. I think I'm going to try to fill in the cracks right here. And the last thing I do before we're going to take it out to our guests is clean up this plate a little bit, just for the sake of a good presentation. So the whipped cream can be a pretty sloppy process, and wiping it down like this will make it present much better. So there you have it. This is our strawberry tort. I'm going to take it out to our guests and we're going to slice it up at the table. <laughs> Alright, so this is the strawberry tort, guys. It's not sliced yet. So I'm going to slice this up for you right now. Try to make it as even as I can. Thank you. So this is, we joke that it's our healthy dish tonight. It has fruit. Yeah, it's strawberry. It's totally okay. It's strawberry. So which one of you submitted this dish? I did. It's you. And have you had it before? Yeah, my mom made it a really long time ago for my sister's birthday. Uh, but I actually found the recipe on Stumble Pond. Oh, that's a great place. Yeah, and I, just, yeah. I bookmarked it because I wanted to try and make it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do we think, guys? Mm, really this is my good. favorite little Yeah. Um, the cake has so many eggs in it, I'm surprised. It's almost all eggs. Really? Yeah, you have to beat the egg whites like you would for meringues or something, and then um, you combine it with everything else, and it turns out really spongy. Yeah, it's like really spongy. Yeah. So how did you get all your legs? Um, I basically did what everyone else did. I just mm -hmm. messaged people on Facebook, and I actually have a few friends back home who are in school in California. They mm -hmm. shared it on their profiles, which got some likes. Yeah, that definitely helps. And I know you were like competing against someone who was right <laughs> under you. It was really intense, actually. Yeah, because you had 50, the fifth place had like 46. So yeah, I think it was. It was a battle. Zucchini burgers, so it would have been kind of a strange dish to have with all these desserts. Mm -hmm. Right. We would have done it. <laughs> but you were in your spot here, so congratulations. <laughs> Alright, so we finished our meal now pretty much. So do you guys have a favorite? 
I like the strawberry one, actually. And you don't have to say that just because I'm happy with you. No, I <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Oh, I really like the strawberry. It's really huh? good. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Actually, I like the strawberries, but I really like the slave rocks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Those are the favorite on Facebook, not surprisingly okay. the favorite. Yeah. 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 The full cinnamon rolls. Those, yeah. 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 It was so nice. It's, yeah, it's a tough choice. I mean, all these look really delicious. So we're going to invite our chefs out here right now. Yay. And thank you guys all for coming to our meal. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here at Kitchenventions, we thank you for a great first season, and we hope you'll join us in the fall for season two. One, two, three, finish!